I'm Al Levy from Unstoppable Recording Machine, Nail the Mix, and I am happy to be on Mr. Jordan Valeriat's podcast, and I'm here to answer some of your questions. So let us begin. Three, two, one. This is the Ask JV Show. first one is about the Monuments album, The Amanusis, which I produced the vocals for on and consulted on the mix. This is by Mr. Chris Bedan, and he said, How did he manage to get such a great and usable guitar tone using the Line 6 stuff on the Monuments album? Every time I used to use my Pod HD500X, they sound very thin and harsh. Can't manage to get a usable tone. Well, Chris... There's a few things you should know about the Monuments album, which is that I didn't record the guitars. So there's that. But I know exactly what went into them because I've worked with John Brown many times. I worked with him on that album. I had him on Creative Live with me twice, actually. And I've done tone packs with him. My old tone store, which is now shut down, actually sold the tones from the album. And you can actually find them on his shop. We gave him the tones. So if you go to find John Brown's personal online store, you can download the tones. And you can see for yourself that they're actually really, really simple. The cliche about tone is in the hands applies to John Brown 100%. He plays with barely any gain, a little bit of overdrive, and that heaviness comes from his hammer of a right hand. The dude has tone for miles in his hands. I suggest, first of all, that if your tones are coming out crappy from the Line 6 stuff, that you examine what you're putting into the Line 6. Now, say that you do have a great player, and you are getting great takes, and it still sounds thin and harsh. There's some things that you want to uh, look at. Like, for instance, where is your input level? Are you hitting the Line 6 input at the right level? And if you look at the Line 6 manuals, they talk about this. It's very important with the Line 6 stuff, and any amp sim for that matter, that you calibrate your input level properly. If you don't do that, you do risk a harsh, noisy, thin sounding guitar. So say you got that right. It still sounds weird. Well, are you using too much gain? John Brown uses barely any gain. So the more gain you add, the more noise you add. That's another thing. Get your levels straight and then get your right hand in check and then turn the gain down. And beyond that, if it still sounds harsh, well, that's your buddy EQ's job. Get in there, notch out some harsh frequencies, look between 3 and 7K, dial in a really, really narrow Q, go hunting for the harshness, and kill it with merciless abandon. Next question here is from Blank. All right, Blank, I'm going to read your question now. This is more of a producing question than a mixing question, but I'd really like to know how many layers of vocals you usually include in a mix for shouts, but also for clean vocals. Well, that totally depends, now doesn't it? As a general rule, I do like to get doubles almost without fail. I do like to get quads also if I need to, but some vocalists don't need that. And there's a certain intimacy that you lose with every single layer that you add. So basically the way I see it is the more intimate you want a vocal, the less layers. Now, the problem with that is that if the vocalist isn't very good, <laughs> you're going to have a hard time getting a really in-your-face intimate vocal with just one track because it's going to sound like garbage. So, first of all, I think about what am I working with? Am I working with someone who's got a great sounding voice which can fill up the recording with just one track? Or am I dealing with somebody who needs to be layered several times? I go from there. Then I start thinking about, well, what does the arrangement of the song need? And uh, how can I best serve the arrangement? Am I trying to add drama, add intimacy, reduce drama, or what? So, for instance, if I have a very intimate vocal down the middle that's like single or maybe doubled, how would I want the chorus to pop? Well, I probably want it to pop by going stereo. By going stereo, that means, you know, left and right all the way. And I would probably want to quad those vocals. It just depends. Again, it just depends. You need to serve the arrangement of the song. So I always think about it in terms of where is the song going and how will I serve it best. As a general rule, the worse the singer is, the more layers I add because I'm trying to cover up their inconsistencies. I'm trying to cover up the problems. And I'm trying to go for a much bigger sound that it might not sound quite as unique or might not sound as much like them, but that's good because what they sound like is garbage. You just got to kind of take these things into consideration. There's no 
general rule. I have worked with some vocalists, back to the monuments thing, since we talked about monuments in the previous question, where I'll have 32 tracks of vocals. Fuck it, right? I mean, if the guy's incredible and he's got five-part harmonies and we're tripling every single one because why not? It sounds huge and he's great. Well, we'll go for it. With a singer that good, sometimes you just want one line also because you want it to sound all intimate. Use your better judgment. Now, what if you don't have better judgment? Well, develop it. And how you develop it is by studying other productions. I would listen to your 10 favorite vocal productions. Think about what they are. Grab a notebook that you can write in. Yes, with a pen. Believe it or not, I am actually suggesting that you write something down physically, not type it, because the brain the brain connection is much stronger if you actually write things down than if you type them. And I want you to analyze how these vocals are mixed on these records, okay? I want you to analyze what happens... When it goes to a chorus, am I hearing it on the sides? How many different voices am I hearing? What kind of harmonies am I hearing? Am I hearing an octave underneath the chorus? Am I hearing whisper tracks? What am I hearing? Ask yourself what you're hearing and do it for your favorite mixes. After a while, you'll start to hear this stuff when you listen to productions. That'll be soaked in by your subconscious. and It'll become part of your tastes and part of your judgment and will come out in your decisions. So not sure what to do. Copy the masters. All right, next question. This question is by question. So here you go, question. Here's an answer. How do you go about adding extra production, synth, sound effects, etc., to your tracks? I've seen you add some extra addition to tracks, but wonder where you start. Well, much like the vocal question, I start from the point of thinking about the arrangement of the song and where the song needs to go. And I also think in terms of energy. Okay, so what I mean by that is... Is the energy of the song flowing from part to part or within the parts properly? When a vocal drops out, right, there's a riff playing and there's a vocal, Um, what happens when the vocal stops? Does the energy keep going well? Like, is there a drum fill there to serve it? Or does it feel like you kind of dropped off a little bit? And if it feels like it dropped off a little bit, I start to think of what can be added there. And it doesn't necessarily have to be synth or sound effects or production it could just be a a guitar line or a drum fill or it could be a sample or it could be a sound effect but i don't think about it in terms of okay now we're going to add sound effects i think about it in terms of now we're going to keep the drama going we're going to keep the energy going we're going to keep the song from falling off or if it's supposed to fall off i'll think about what i can strip out or color it with instead then i also think about things like does this sound textured enough So, for instance, say that you have a very simple arrangement. That doesn't mean that it has to sound boring. You know, it could be three chords and heavy, but that doesn't mean that it needs to sound totally bland. And what I mean by that is, what can you add in underneath that will make it sound more interesting? Like subtle percussion layers, a synth that mimics the guitars. You know, a lot of this, again, comes from listening to lots of music and analyzing what my favorite people have done in certain spots. So I go from that approach. I don't have a technical answer for you other than just listen to music and listen for when the energy drops off in the song or where it sounds like a certain whatever you have, like say it's a power chord holding out. If that doesn't quite sound rich enough for you, think about what you could layer it with. Does it need to be layered with a distorted organ, possibly, like Opeth does? What would happen? Does Do you come into the chorus and it just doesn't explode enough? You know, ask yourself these questions. Do you want this part coming in to be like this explosive, huge thing, but it just is a riff when it comes in? Well, maybe you need some, some production effects there. Um, so yeah, I think about in terms of what the song needs, and I let that be my guide. Otherwise, you're just programming for the sake of programming, And I don't like doing anything just for the sake of doing it. I like to have a purpose behind everything I do. Purpose-oriented production. P-O-P. I just made that up. All right, next question. This is also by this dude named Your Question. Wow, Your Question has submitted so many questions. And this is a two-part. Do you EQ the mic or the singer? Is it bad to pull some of the nasally tone out of a vocal or boost the low mids? Why would it be bad to make it not sound like this anymore? I mean, I pull out anything I don't like. And yeah, some vocalists do need a little bit of help in the low mids. There's nothing wrong with boosting or cutting. If you read online where people say not to boost, just uh, 
kindly delete that from your mind. Uh, it is perfectly okay to boost. You just need to know why you're boosting and what. You need more note, you need a little bit more body in a vocal. The low mids are where you want to look. The vocal sounds nasally. Pull that 1K down a little. Nothing wrong with it. Just do it. And I don't EQ the mic or the singer. I EQ the vocal. The mic or the singer aren't what I'm recording. I'm recording a vocal. And it's important that you take that into consideration. The vocal is the summation of the singer's voice going through a microphone, through a preamp, possibly a compressor. It's the summation of the entire chain up until it hits the DAW. Um, that's what I'm EQing. I'm not EQing individual pieces. And now the second part of your question is, I'm hearing a lot of subtle doubling in almost every record I listen to nowadays. Is this accomplished with separate takes or processing the same vocal track in two different ways? Doubler, plug-in, slight detuning, and panning? Well, probably both. I use both. But the thing is, I don't use doubler plugins and slight detuning and panning to try to create a double. I use that to create texture. I don't like the idea of a digital double or, you know, taking, trying to actually create size. I don't think it works right. It never sounds right to me. What I use the slight detuning and panning and all those things for are texture because I'm a texture whore. I love textured sounding recordings and that is a great way to do it. It's a great way to make a mono vocal sound more stereo. Even if you double a vocal down the middle, you might want the ambience to be more stereo. You might, you might just want it to sound wider. That's a really good way to do it. But it's not something that I do for size. I hope that helps. Thank you for having me on your podcast, Jordan. I love you. You rule. Thank you, guys. Thank you.